Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. In recent episodes, I have been working on developing a package I'm calling Phylotyper uh, that will classify 16S rRNA gene sequences to the appropriate taxonomic grouping. Now, please don't run away at all that jargon and gobbledygook. Trust me when I tell you that you're gonna learn a lot in today's episode and in this overall series about learning how to develop packages, how to optimize your code, and in general, how to work with R. In today's episode, we're going to see if we can't speed up a part of our code using RCPP, RCPP, two P's. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's the R package that allows you to incorporate C++ code into uh, your R code to perhaps see if you can't make it more performant. In the last episode, what we talked about was trying to use a variety of ways of dividing a matrix by a vector uh, to make it faster, right? So we started out with an approach that transposed a matrix twice, and we ended up using the rep function. So we got to a point where it's pretty fast. I think about 6.7, 6.8 seconds to do this one major calculation that's important for calculating the conditional probability of seeing a kamer in any given genus. And so I wanna see if we can't improve upon that further using C++. Let's head over to our studio and we'll get going with today's episode right now. I am here in my home directory for my Phylotyper R package. If you wanna get the repository as it currently stands, down below in the show notes for today's episode is a link to the repository at the beginning of the episode, as well as a link for the end of the episode. So again, this is the home directory. I'm gonna go ahead and say use R, uh, and then we'll say Kamers. That is the R script that has my Kamers calculations. And you'll see I had oh, six different approaches for doing this one calculation. Um, and I'll go ahead into my benchmarking directory here. And in here, I had a vignette.r script. So I'm gonna go ahead and load my package. And then we'll go ahead and load these different components. These first few steps are loading the sequence data as well as the taxonomy data and making sure it's all in the same order before we then go about building the Kamer database. For right now, I'm gonna go ahead and use profviz uh, with an S. <laughs> uh, and so we talked about this in recent episodes that this package allows you to see how much time is being spent in each part of um, a function, right? So this function, build Kamer database, is over here in Kamers. Um, and it, one of the steps in that is this function, calc genus conditional prob. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and see how much time it's spending in this part of the function. So this actually took about 7.6 seconds, still a lot faster than any of the other approaches. And so what we find is that the whole thing is using build Kamer database as we'd expect. And then we have detect Kamers across sequences using about 4,000 some uh, milliseconds, again, four seconds. This seems to be a little bit longer than I recall it taking in previous episodes. I think there's some variation and maybe I had some stuff running in the background. Um, but this step of calc genus conditional prob um, is spending a lot of time in this step on line 133. And as we saw in the last episode, we found ways to make it faster, but I still wanna see if we can't make it even faster yet. And so we'll do that using RCPP to incorporate C++ code into our analysis. So um, I'm going to go ahead and um, come to my console and we'll do use underscore RCPP. Oh, and so I forgot to give it a name. So I'm gonna give this Kamers um, as a name. And so it's going to create SRC Kamers.cpp. So if we come back here, we now see we have an SRC directory. In there is Kamers.cpp, as well as a .git ignore file that is ignoring a variety of different objects related to the compiling of that C++ code. So it gave us some information here. So copy and paste the following lines into our phylotyper package.r. So let's go back there. So our, uh, well, we don't have a phylotyper package. So we'll go ahead and create a new one. And so again, we'll call it phylotyper underscore package dot r. Good. And so we'll go ahead and copy this into there. And then we also need this line uh, that we'll then put in here. I uh, got a little bit too much, so we'll go ahead and save that. And I wanna expand this to, just to make sure I got everything. And so that all looks good. Um, and um, so I'll go ahead and save this uh, just in case. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead uh, and back to my project root directory. And I believe it changed my namespace file. Uh, maybe not. Uh, did it change my description? Yes, so now I have RCPP uh, in here as being part of the imports and it links to RCPP as well. I'll go ahead and do document. All right, so uh, again, just to kind of look at some of this output. So the first thing it does is update the filer type or documentation, writing namespace. So now if we look at namespace, we see that, yeah, it's importing from RCPP source um, CPP, right? And what else did it do? Uh, I think it went ahead and compiled even though there's really nothing to compile at this point. And it's yelling at me about um, the documentation for my KMERS script in my, I think, classify sequence function. I'm not gonna worry about that. We'll come back to that in another episode. So we'll go ahead and close some of this stuff out. This is creating some of the infrastructure that we need to go ahead and be able to use C++ code through the RCPP. I always wanna put an extra P <laughs> through that package. And so, uh, for now, we'll come back to kmers.r. And again, what we want to do is this step. And so I'm going to create a new function here, calculate log probability. And we'll give it the genus count, the word, uh, specific priors, and the genus counts. So genus count and genus counts are unfortunately named functions. I'm going to roll with that for now, though. A uh, genus counts has the number of times uh, or the number of sequences in each genus in our database. Genus count is the uh, number of kmers for each genus. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and change this because this is distracting. <laughs> so I'm going to come back up here. I'll remove that comment and let's go ahead and change it, right? So genus counts, I think is fine. So I'm going to call this kmer genus count and we'll put that there and here, right, and I think that's good. Maybe we'll put this on a separate line, and then I'm gonna look for genus underscore account, and we'll look for the whole word, and let's see if we can find the next, there we go. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and replace these genus count values with kmer genus count. Again, just to simplify and avoid uh, confusion, and I think that will be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it, load it, test it to make sure that I didn't screw anything up. That looks good. Good. All right. So um, again, I'm going to comment out the version from the last episode, and I'm going to expose this function, calculate log probability. And so I'll go ahead and copy this into my kmers.cpp file. And so this is my C++ code. And so what we need to indicate when designing a function in C++ is what is the output going to be? And so the output will be a numeric matrix. And so a numeric matrix is a special data object in RCPP that's different from kind of standard C++, okay? And so we're gonna then call the function calculate log probability, and we're gonna need to put this on separate lines. And so this kmer genus count will also be a numeric matrix. And then the word specific priors will be a numeric vector. And then our genus counts will also be a numeric vector. Uh, and I need a space there, All right? And then we're gonna go ahead and use curly braces and we'll need to return some type of, um, we'll say log of, um, what, do we, what do I call it back here? Log, log probability, okay. So I'll put that in here and we'll go ahead and define log probability as being a numeric matrix. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that and test it. So of course it fails, but I wanted to do this to see if it would actually compile. Um, and it failed because I forgot a semicolon down here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that and test it. All right, so it failed, uh, four fails, but it compiled, right? So let me go ahead and grab the formula that we had here with, uh, maybe the transpose will be the easiest way of seeing it. And so I'll pop that in here into uh, kmers.cpp and I'll go ahead and comment this out and really I'm going to ignore these t's the transposes because right now I'm trying to get a general sense of the formula right so we're going to have to make a nested for loop because we're going to need to iterate over the rows and the columns 
So to make a for loop in C++, we'll do for int i equals zero, i less than log probability, or i less than kmer genus count uh, dot row. Um, and I think that is the number of rows. And we'll then go ahead and iterate over that. Um, but we also need to increment the i. So we'll do i plus plus. And so basically what this is going to do is it's going to start i at zero, and then it's going to increment it one each time through the loop. And so the challenge here is that r is base one, whereas c++ is base zero. So the first element of a vector in r is element one, but in c++ it's zero. So we need to kind of mentally make that conversion, right? And so then what we'll do is we'll say this goes over the rows, and then we'll do for int j equals zero j uh, less than kmer genus count calls. Maybe it's calls and rows. Um, we'll roll with that. Oh, I think I need to have parentheses there. And then I also need the j plus plus. I keep forgetting to add the incrementer because we don't use the incrementer automatically in R. All right. So again, our numeric matrix log probability, I need to go ahead and define the size of that. And so that's going to be um, the number of kmers and the number of genera, right? And so actually, you know what? I can grab this here as being the number of kmers. So I'll do int n kmers, equaling that, the semicolon at the end. And then we'll go ahead and have i less than and kmers and then int and uh, genera as kmer genus count dot calls all right and then we'll have and genera here in place of that okay so we need to go ahead then and insert the dimensions for log probability it'll be n kmers and n genera so we can compile it again by loading the package and it'll automatically compile it for us um, I'm waiting to run the test until I get the full formula incorporated. And so now what we'll have is a log probability of um, i, j. Actually, I can do i comma j with in parentheses using this numeric matrix form in RC++. All right, so that will equal uh, the log, and we're going to use camera genus count plus word specific priors, right? So we'll do... Um, Kmer genus count, i comma j, plus word specific priors. And that is going to be i as well, because that's indexed by the Kmer. And then we're going to make sure we get the right parentheses. And so we'll then divide that. Um, let's see. And then we'll divide that by uh, genus counts plus one. And so that's going to be indexed over the j, right? And so then we'll do genus counts j. Uh, plus one with a semicolon at the end there. All right, and so that seems to do it. We'll go ahead and reload it, make sure it compiles right, does. Let's go ahead and test it to see if everything works. No, it does not work. So what is wrong? Let's see if we can figure that out here quickly. So it's complaining that it can't find the function calculate log probability, which is why it's failing the test. So we'll again, go ahead and export this with two forward slashes and then two square braces and RCPP colon colon export. Go ahead and save and test. And so that passed. A couple things to notice here in the output when it was compiling is that it runs this function compile attributes where it updates source RCPP exports.cpp as well as our RCPP exports R. And so if we look in our, um, let's look in our source directory first. We now see this extra file RCPP exports.cpp. And this is the exported version of our function, right? And so it's updating this. We see that it says document is read only, right? And so this is converting our RCPP code into um, more pure C++ code, right? And so basically RCPP is allowing us to avoid writing all this. If we go back into our R directory, we also see we have RCPP exports.r there. And so here then is the function that again is read only, it's being generated by compile attributes. And the function in C++ that it's creating has an underscore uh, at the front of it, right? And so that is going to be totally uh, transparent to us. We really don't need to worry about that. 
And so as we could see, it ran it without any errors and it passed all of our tests. So that's great. <laughs> so I wanna go ahead and use the micro benchmark that we used last time. So again, we can do micro uh, benchmark uh, with uh, micro benchmark, right? And we'll then do times equals 10. And then we'll do this function call. So we'll run this 10 times and see what happens in the output. So that's completed, but I'm getting a bit of a warning message. And it's telling me that it took 21 seconds to execute. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so that was a while. So I have a couple ideas on things that I could do to further improve the code. So let's go ahead back to camers.cpp. So the first thing that I want to do is instead of passing the copies of these objects, I'm going to pass references of these objects. And so in C++, you can do that with the ampersand after the name of the object or before uh, the name of the object. So I'll go ahead and save and load to compile it all. And then I'm going to rerun my micro benchmark. And again, what we're trying to do better than is uh, a median of 21 and a quarter seconds. Uh, that was certainly a lot slower than what we got with the rep function using pure R. All right, so that didn't really improve things much. <laughs> we had 21.0 instead of 21 and a quarter. So um, something else we might think about doing is making these constants. So we'll go ahead and add the const um, keyword before each of these objects. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna load it and test it just to double check that everything's good. Yep, everything still passes the test. And so we'll come back to our vignette and go ahead and rerun this and see if we can do better than 21 seconds. So if I'm honest, that actually took about half a second longer, <laughs> 21.5 seconds. However, this constant with passing by reference, in my understanding is the best practice for working with C++ and that it tends to be more memory efficient. So um, I'm gonna roll with that. However, the next thing that I wanna try is flipping the order of my loops. I'm looping over the rows and then the columns currently. So I'm curious what happens if I loop by the columns and then by the rows. You'll remember in the last episode that I talked about how matrices in R are column based, right? Rather than row based. And so I can imagine that the way it is storing this numeric matrix might prefer things to be column based, right? So if I flip the order of the loops, I'm curious if it'll actually run faster. Let's go ahead and test that. Good, uh-huh, the best code as it says. Thank you so much. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead then and rerun, uh, load and then rerun my micro benchmark. Wow, so that ended up being a lot faster. We really cut the time almost in half down to 11.2 seconds by flipping the order of our loops. That's really awesome. <laughs> I'm glad I thought to try that. All right, so one other thing that I notice is that we're doing this genus counts on J, adding one to that. But the outer loop now is the J loop, right? And so basically, I am adding one to genus counts J. I'm not storing the value every time, but I'm doing that n kmers times, which is really inefficient, right? So maybe what I'll do is go ahead and cut that out, and I'll call this genus counts uh, P1. And we'll go ahead and put that in here as genus uh, counts uh, P1. I think I may have gotten that wrong. Nope, I think that's right. Genus counts P1, right? And then we'll do an int on that because the output is an integer. So we'll go ahead and save that. Let's see if this gets us any better than 11.2 seconds on the median. So we'll test first load it, and then run the micro benchmark on our vignette. All right, so that got us to 10.6 seconds on median, which is about half a second faster uh, than what we had before. So moving that up and out of the loop uh, did simplify things. Of course, it's not nearly as fast as we got using pure R. So the next thing I wanna try is kind of developing this step further here on line 17. RCPP has some what's called sugar, syntactic sugar, that allows us to vectorize certain operations. And so what I could do would be to go ahead and grab this line and make this a numeric vector, right? And then genus counts P1 could be genus counts plus one, right? And so this should work, right? And then what we'll have effectively would then over here be genus counts P1 on J, right? The other thing that it has for syntactic sugar is that it allows you to access a column, right? 
And so we could turn these J's under underscores to make it clear that we want the whole column, right? And so we could then go ahead and lose that and um, entirely then lose the J loop, right? So let me go ahead and clean this up a little bit and then I'll go back and describe what's happening here because I realize this might be a little bit confusing. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through each row with log probability I and then dealing with the whole column, right? And then we're gonna have the log and inside of the log, we're going to have the um, Kamer genus counts I. So that's the whole row of Kamer genus, genus count. And we're gonna to add to that the word specific priors value. Um, I have it with a round parenthesis, but it could also be the square parenthesis, divided by genus counts P1. So genus counts P1 is going to be the, the same number of columns that is represented by this underscore, right? And so we can go ahead and let's save this and test it to make sure that everything works the way we hope it works. Good, that passed. So I'm gonna go ahead then and load this and then we'll also go ahead and run that line in our vignette. So that actually made it longer using the syntactic sugar. I'm a little bit surprised by that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put things back to how I had them. Uh, and hopefully I don't screw this up too horribly bad. All right, so that's back to the way it was. I'm gonna go ahead and just to confirm that I've got it right, go ahead and run the test one more time. That passes. Go ahead and load and then rerun the vignette. All right, so again, we're back at 10.3 seconds uh, as a median. So that's not as fast as we would have hoped. Um, I don't know if there's anything else in here that I could do to make this faster. If you are a bit of a C++ guru, <laughs> let me know uh, if you can spot something in my code that might make it even faster yet. Um, I think we've done things again with how we bring in the arguments. Uh, we've also gotten the order of the loops correct. We tried the syntactic sugar, but that just didn't pan out. Um, so I think this is about as good as we can manage to do with C++. I think ultimately what we had over here in Kamers with using the rep function is probably about as fast as we're gonna get it. And it's probably using super um, optimized C++ code under the hood. I'm gonna go ahead and save this and then re test that passes i'll go ahead and load it again and then i'm going to run the benchmark again just to make sure that nothing wild happened um, but to give us a sense of the difference in performance between our two functions so yeah sure enough we're back at 6.6 .6 seconds for the median uh i mean it's a difference of like four seconds which isn't huge but at the same time why would we use something slower when uh, this is faster i think the other benefit of working in something that's pure are like this is that it's easier to maintain. I could imagine someone coming down the road uh, in the future and looking at my code, and this is just gonna be a lot easier to read for them, especially if I can get it all to be on one line um, like we have here, right? And so I, I think this is gonna just be a lot easier to maintain and read than this type of code here, which um, I didn't do a tutorial here on how to write C++ code. I kind of approach this assuming that you might already know some C++ code, right? And so not a lot of people in my experience know C++. And so that makes things like this harder to maintain in the long run because someone might come, come along and say, hey, I wanna make this code better. I wanna do something different. And this might be a bit more impenetrable to them than doing things in R, all right? So I'm gonna leave this in here, although I'm not using it, right? Because I want you to be able to see what the repository looks like when I commit the code here. Um, I haven't done that in a while with you all watching, so maybe I'll go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll use the terminal um, here instead of using the git tab up here. It's basically the same thing. Again, I can do git status. I see I've modified uh, seven, six files and a directory. I'll go ahead and add um, the description, the namespace, the R, uh, Kamer's file, the benchmarking vignette, my R, um, R CPP exports, my R filotyper dot, um, filotyper package dot R script. And then uh, let's see what that looks like. So that leaves the SRC. If I then go ahead and do git add SRC, 
um, we see that we've got three files that we're adding, right? The rcpp exports and my kmers.cpp file, as well as a git ignore file, okay? And if I were to come up to my git tab and hit the refresh button, I'd see that all of those are added. Again, it's the same idea. I'll go ahead then and do git commit hyphen m, and I'll say attempt to optimize uh, log prob calculation with rcpp, okay? And then I'll go ahead and do a git push, and that will be up on GitHub for when you want to download the repository as it is now, right? And so that you can see what my C++ code looks like as well as the other files that were modified along the way. All right, well, I hope you got something out of this in terms of thinking about how you can incorporate C++ code into your R packages. In this case, it did not improve the performance of my package, which is fine, right? And I talked about some of the, you know, the pros and cons of using RCPP. Yes, it might make it faster, but it might make it harder to work with that code and use that code and read that code in the future if you're working with contributors who perhaps don't know C++. There's a lot of great bells and whistles in RCPP. I encourage you to learn more about them because there are certainly going to be circumstances when you would rather use C++ than pure R. So that you don't miss the next episode, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.